What's going on Amazon sellers or hopefully soon to be Amazon sellers? In this video, I'm going to be interviewing a student of mine who took my course in October of 2017. He was already selling on Amazon and was doing about $50,000 or so per month and something around there. And then now he's actually doing over $250,000 per month and he actually just recently quit his job. So I think it's gonna be a very good and valuable uh, interview for you to watch from somebody who is 100% doing Amazon now and taking that leap of faith. So what I'm gonna do is gonna play the video right now. Welcome everybody, if anyone's watching this, because we're not live right now. Um, but yeah, guys, this is uh, Matthew T right here. He's an Amazon seller. He does, he does very well, sells a lot of electronics, and we will be interviewing him in this video. So first off, how did you get started selling on Amazon? <clears throat> oh man, okay, so um, it was about four or five years ago, I think maybe five years, 2012, 2013. Um, I started off just like, buying, flipping cell phones on like Craigslist, Facebook groups, local trade groups. Um, you know, I had like 600 bucks and I would, when I first started and I met this guy at school who, who did that and he gave me the idea and I was like, man, that's a really good idea. So I just kind of like started doing it and asking him, you know, questions along the way, you know, eventually wound up through a series of events, um, selling on Amazon because I was looking for outlets to sell stuff because whenever, you know, when you trade products, when you sell, resell mm -hmm. physical products, uh, eventually you get to a point where like you, you want to find the best possible outlets to sell things. For a long time, I just flipped things locally, like trading mm -hmm. with other people to build up money. I think when I got to about $2,000 or so, that's when I, about when I started selling on Amazon. Awesome. And was that in high school or college? Because you mentioned school, you like met a guy. Oh yeah, no, that was college. That was college. So I'm 28 now, and let's see. When I met him, I want to say I was 20 through 22 or 23. Awesome. Do you still do business with him at all anymore? We we stay in touch a lot. I was oh. talking to him yesterday. Um, we don't. We never really did business together yeah. per se, but like he was just, he was sort of my unofficial mentor mm. you know, in a lot of ways. That's awesome. That is awesome. That's definitely a good story for sure. Definitely hustling and everything starting from definitely humble beginnings and yeah i mean there's a lot of stuff you can do on craigslist that people are surprised where you can definitely make some money but yeah craigslist is interesting you really can it really it really shocked me when i when i first started i mean if you live in a big metropolitan area like and you can become an expert in like one type of really popular thing like cell phones are great i mean i did nothing but iphones for like three years oh geez like i i did not do anything else that's funny. Yeah, I remember I, because I started on eBay, but then I got actually like into trading stuff on Craigslist where I would start with certain items and just trade up and up and up until I would sell stuff. But Apple products were always uh, very hot. So next question, <clears throat> when you first got to start selling on Amazon, so you started with $2,000, what kind of sales were you generating when you're beginning pretty much? Oh man, I'd have to go back and look the exact numbers, but basically um, I was selling nothing but used products for years. I kind of... Um, I kind of found my niche and, you know, like I said, I was just, I mean, when you, when you don't have a whole lot of money in the beginning, it's, it can be hard. I, I didn't even know about all the stuff that you teach back then. Yeah. So I was just doing what worked for me, <laughs> right? Like I, I was just <clears throat> finding things, you know, I buy a phone for 150 cause I know I can sell it for 200 or I can sell it for 229 on Amazon after shipping and fees, blah, blah, I'll have like 200 bucks. So I just figured out that that worked. And so I just did that for a long time. Um, and so, yeah, I was selling nothing but used stuff for a long time. Yeah, if it doesn't, uh, what's it called? If, if it works, don't break it. So that's definitely good. I mean, you found yeah. your little small niche and kept with it. That's awesome. Um, were you, for, so you started selling online. Where is only Amazon, any other marketplaces, or just strictly Amazon? So um, <laughs> I think actually another thing about what pushed me to Amazon was I started with eBay because eBay was kind of more well known back then and something happened like I bought like a third like a really cheap like $30 phone on Craigslist and some and then I sold it on eBay you know and some, the guy that bought it claimed that it was stolen and so eBay like freaks out and you know they start like sending me all this and I think th this is when this is when I was like maybe 22 and I didn't know anything about selling online. I didn't like look up any help or anything. So I'm like trying to explain to eBay and talk to them like, you know, Hey, you know, I didn't know it was stolen. Like I checked it when I bought it. Like I'm trying to, but of course they don't care. And I got category banned. 
Oh, dang. <laughs> I, got, I got indefinitely category banned on eBay because yeah, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't seek out help. And so... Hey, I mean, yeah, used electronics sell very well on eBay, but I know they're definitely when it comes to any type of like electronics or high, high-end electronics, they can definitely be a little stingy on that. So now to the next question. So what were your biggest challenges? Cash flow. Cash flow. <laughs> Cash flow. Um, looking back on it now, there's like some things I could have done to grow faster, but whenever... <laughs> So after I got, you know, category banned on eBay and I just, I never really tried to fight it. I still haven't. Like, I, I don't care about eBay. I like Amazon more, so it doesn't even matter to me. Yeah. Um, I might try to fight it in the future, but, uh, you know, when you sell on Amazon, they only pay out every two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, when, when I was buying nothing but cell phones, I mean, cell phones are expensive. So you're dropping 200 to $300 a phone. So we don't, when you only have two to three grand, that means you can buy 10 phones. And I can, you can sell 10 phones in one day on Amazon easily, yeah. <laughs> but you don't get your money for two weeks. So you got to go around, collect the phones, pick them up, sell them, and then wait two weeks to get your money so you can do it all again. And so in the beginning, um, I just, I would reinvest like basically everything because I had a full-time mm -hmm. job, you know, I worked in grocery distribution for like four or five years while I was doing this. And so I just would reinvest all the money and just roll it over, roll, I mean, and roll it over just thousands of times. So, so cash flow, probably the biggest challenge. And then on top of cash flow, like, you know, just personal limitations with time, you know, you have like, you need to try to have a life. Like I tried to have yeah. a life. <laughs> I, was in I was in college, I was working full time, I'm married. Um, so, I mean, there's limitations, you know, from personal reasons. Right. Definitely some good things, but yeah, that's probably a good problem to have, I would say cash flow. So, I mean, but still, I mean, definitely um, with the whole two week thing. Um, yeah, so let's go to the next thing. So, yeah, we already talked about Craigslist. Um, you kind of already told me more about that. Anything else you want to talk about Craigslist? Um, it's super underrated, and people really? always have these negative connotations about it. Like, <clears throat> I've met thousands of people over the year on Craigslist, and I had a problem, like, once. Mm -hmm. And I could tell it was going to be a problem, so I made them meet me inside a McDonald's. And then they sort of tried to rob me, <laughs> but, like, it was kind of funny because there was, like, these people having a Bible study like over in another booth and they were like watching us. What ended up happening is they didn't rob me, but they basically convinced me to give them another hundred bucks to go away. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I mean, you've probably done extremes amounts of visits with Craigslist, but yeah, I mean, most yeah. people, I mean, just don't meet them at your house and you're fine. Um, yeah, but 99.9% .9 of the time it's just regular people. Yep. All right. So then basically you get to the point where you're selling on Amazon, you're just building up, building up. And then I know I met you basically it was about October of twenty of twenty seventeen, and then you actually took a course of mine. So when did you complete that? You know, I don't know if I've actually gone through all the videos, oh, yeah. but yeah, you, you I, 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 through I went through everything that was that was like immediately relevant. To mm -hmm. me. I would say by December. December, awesome. November, December. Um, how have your sales tracked since like using? A few extra strategies that I basically gave you. Let's see. Well, since I bought your course, I think I pretty much like doubled, like because some of the some of the stuff, some of the ideas you gave me, like really really helped, like mm -hmm. things that I hadn't thought about before. And but, I mean, I remember I just had randomly came across you somehow on Facebook, yeah. and so I remember I called you on like Facebook Messenger because I, I prefer to just talk to people. Yeah. I think we talked for like an hour or so, and I could just tell that okay, this guy is not BS, like. I can tell when I talk to someone if they actually have experience doing something. Yes. And so I can tell this guy's actually done what he's talking about. Like he may not be a perfect genius expert, but it doesn't matter. I can, you can learn things from people that are doing stuff. Yes. Like they don't have, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to know everything, but you're out there, you're doing things, you're trying things and you're having success. So I was like, well, I want to learn for this, from this guy. So I'll buy his course. Yeah. I think what it was, we were like in a private label Facebook group and I saw a person who posted something Similar to like what I was saying, because every single person talks about like arbitrage or private label. And this guy just yeah. said, don't do arbitrage. I'm like, whoa. So I messaged you and I was like, oh, and then that's how <laughs> oh, it basically yeah. got happened. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, don't do arbitrage. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand how people get away with it. I guess, I guess I'm ignorant about it. I know people <clears throat> that like teach it. Yeah. But I don't understand because it's not really allowed as far as yeah. I know, but whatever. Well, so a lot of people are having success with arbitrage. They basically started a while ago, so they now they can't get in trouble. But a lot of new people definitely get uh, screwed over with arbitrage. Do you have any employees or are you a one-man show? 
I have one employee right now and then my wife helps me a lot. And then, so I have two separate businesses. I have the one that I originally started myself and I have a business partner with another one. And then it's just my wife and my one employee. Awesome. I'm kind of like, I'm honestly, I kind of grew too fast and I'm trying to contract some Mm -hmm. and then systematize my business and make it super efficient, super trackable. Like, like there's like, there's some things about my business that I don't know that I'm like, this is really bad. I need to know this. Yeah. Like Rebuild how much money does this you make? Like, I need to know that. Like, I don't, I, I don't, I don't analyze things very well. It's just, be, I've kind of like, because of the way I started with hustling, like I've sort of just carried over some of those habits into this business. Like, so for example, back when I used to just flip things local, if I made a hundred bucks, I would. I would like the profit. Like let's say I have, you know, I invest $500, I make $100. So now I have $600. So I made I made a thing to myself where I would take at least half of the profit and reinvest it into my investment capital. So now instead of having 500, I have 550 and I put 50 bucks in my wallet and I could spend that if I wanted to. But I would like force myself to reinvest every time. And so like, you know, I know I'm making profit because I'm always reinvesting. It's growing, growing, growing. But I couldn't, I literally can't tell you exactly how much I'm making. And that's horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely need to set that foundation. Because like you've built up so high, but now you want to take it to even the next level. So you got to build that foundation because yeah, so there's definitely all, a point, yeah. Yeah, all my old systems do not work. And I'm trying to like, I'm like writing SOP, standard operating procedures, and like <clears throat> building out task lists and things so I can create roles, so I can assign a role to somebody and like hire somebody to fill roles. And that's the only way I'm going to be able to like really grow because – I've just pushed way too far beyond the one man show. Yeah, that's perfect. Because I definitely see a lot of people who grow extremely fast, but then if they don't have the foundation built up, they can easily just go down, 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 and don't even realize they're losing money. So, awesome. Is it true that you quit your job and now 100% uh, Amazon? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I, uh, I got a degree in mechanical engineering. I worked as an engineer for two years. And as of March 9th, I let it go. <laughs> Interesting. Um, did you ever take that money from engineering to invest in Amazon or was it just all kind of just paying bills and other things? You know, not, not really. I most, I mostly use that money to pay bills and I have one rental property and then I have the second house I live in now. So that, so that money was mainly for expenses, paying off like school debt, real estate and living off of, and I kind of just. Like I took the money in the very beginning when I started for the business and I just had a separate bank account and then I just used that to build. I didn't, I mean, maybe in the beginning I would take some money from my check and put it in, but not really. I mostly just built up from the money that I started. Awesome. That, that's really good to hear. So what gave you the confidence to simply because you've been making money on Amazon, what was simply the day where it gave you confidence like, okay, I can leave my job now. What kind of gave you that confidence? Oh man. Um... <laughs> Well, the confidence comes from experience for sure. Like, mm. like you're not gonna you're not gonna have confidence unless you're doing something that's working. Yeah. And this has been this has been working for me for a long time. I mean, I've made money the entire time I've been doing it. Like, you'll have, I mean, you'll make mistakes, right? And you'll lose money. Like the first month I signed up for Amazon, I lost twelve hundred bucks because I shipped to APO addresses. The people claim they never got it, and Amazon takes your money. Back then, I didn't know you can make your settings where you don't ship to APO. There's certain ways you could fight that to get the money back. But back then, I didn't know, so I just lost 1200 bucks, And that was like 30% of my money then, so I just like freaked out. Like I was, and I mean, I could have given up at that point, but you know, it's just a learning experience. You learn how to deal with it and move on. I mean, um, just experience, you know, it's working. It's something I realize I want to do. Like I enjoy working for myself. I'm an entrepreneur at heart. It's what, you know, I like doing. I went to the capitalism conference last year in December and, uh, I actually, it was kind of cool. I got to talk to Jeff Hoffman. Um, he's like a billionaire and, um, he started Priceline, I think. I think he's one of the guys that started Priceline and a couple other things. And, um, it's funny, like, you know, you meet these people that are like super rich and they don't like nothing that he said to me was like revolutionary. It was just like, stuff that I know, like he told me, he was like, okay, you need to make a plan and then you need to quit your job on this day. Cause I kept telling him, I was like, okay, you know, I'm making money, I'm doing well, but I'm trying, like at the time I was in this tension between like, well, when should I quit my job? Like, when should I j- jump in and go all in, whatever, whatever. 
And he was like, well, you need to basically just make a plan, execute the plan. And I was like, all right, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so I made a plan. The plan did not go according to plan because my dad ended up getting cancer and like a bunch of stuff in my life kind of changed. And so um, I ended up just like kind of hitting a wall with like everything going on with work and personal life. And I just decided like I had told my bosses in January, hey, I'm probably going to quit like around May. And then like, you know, a bunch of stuff happened. And I went and told them, I was like, yeah, I, can I cannot make it to May, guys. Like I'm going to have to, I gave him like two and a half weeks notice. Oh, dang. Yeah, sorry to hear about that with your father and everything. Hopefully you're doing all right. But um, okay, that's definitely a good story. And yeah, I mean, just some people who have already done it before, like I mean, the guy at Priceline, obviously just a few little tidbits and they definitely can help quite a way. But yeah, I definitely noticed with people who are extremely wealthy are not like really that far away. Like they're not crazy super beans or something like that. But yeah, so that's good. Um, what's your long-term plan? The, the main business, um, just continue to build out my wholesale, systematize it, make it more efficient. I want to make it location independent. I want to stock SKUs that have very low return rates. I would actually, I would like to stock mostly SKUs that if I get returns, I can just like throw them away because I hate removal orders and processing returns. It's horrible. It's, it's, it's just a, a huge pain. Um, so systematizing my business, growing it, uh, building brands, um, for my other partnership I'm on, we're building a brand, uh, designing our own products. And we're also have the opportunity to launch, to get an exclusive and launching a brand for this other company. So just trying to organize things, hire, hire some people when the time is right, continue to build and become more efficient. It sounds like you want to get to the point that if you get hit by a truck, your business can still run. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't. I don't want to be the bottleneck in my business. You know, like yeah. Cash Flow Quadrants by Robert Kiyosaki was really the book that kind of opened my eyes to business. Like he talks about, you know, the four ways to make money. You know, being an employee, self-employed, a business owner, or investor. And so, as soon as I read that book, I was like, wow! Like I want to be a business owner or an investor. Yeah. And, and so I'm still kind of. Like I've pushed more towards the business side because I've outsourced a ton of stuff to Amazon, like in terms of fulfillment. Like I used to ship everything myself. I did merchant fulfilled for years. Yeah. Um, and so I've outsourced all that to Amazon. I don't do any shipping anymore. Um, so, I mean, I definitely systematize some things, but I'm still, I'm still in the self-employed. Awesome. Yeah. Just so definitely wanna, make that transition. I want to move away from that. Yep. And that's definitely where you can scale quite a bit. Yeah. Robert Kiesock is great with that. Um, because there's just so much more that you can do if you just can have other people that are better for you to do and everything. But yeah, that's awesome. What would you say to people who are, I guess are like skeptical who are just wondering if this business is real to actually like make money, like selling products online? I would say, do you, you know anyone that does it personally? <laughs> yeah. Um, if, if the answer to that is no, then you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that's smart. And that's definitely smart. <laughs> Honestly, I don't want to be rude, but it's like, does, okay, if you're talking about the online retail business model, mm -hmm. all you have to do is go on Amazon and see thousands and thousands and thousands of companies that are doing it. And those companies are run by regular people. So obviously people are doing it. Um, so it definitely works. You just have to carve out your niche, your carve out your niche. I mean, one thing I would tell people is like, don't try to do exactly what other people are doing. I mean, you want to take in as much information from sources as you can, like from your court, your course is great. You know, there's a lot of, there's like free people on YouTube that are you know posting stuff, you know, you want to watch things, you want to take in data, but most of all, you want to try stuff yourself, figure out what works, carve out your own path because what I did exactly, I have absolutely no idea if I started what I did five years ago, if I started it today, if it would still work. Because the world is different now. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have no idea if it would still work. My, my thought is that it would, but I could, I could be wrong. Yeah. If someone wants to try to go and recreate the exact path I did and start flipping phones and try, you know, let me know. I'll help you. Send me an email. <laughs> I'll tell you everything to do. But um, I mean, the point just being, you know, taking information – Try things, yep. rinse, repeat, and and actually, I it's funny. I I ran into a guy this morning at Chick Fil A. Ryan, his name was Ryan. If he watches this, and he turned out to be an entrepreneur. I ended up asking him to have breakfast with me. He owns like a, a valet business, and he's doing really well. And we had an awesome conversation. And 
he, he told me about this book called uh, Ready, Fire, Aim, which I'd never heard of. And then I thought about it saying I was like, ready, fire, aim. I was like, that's sort of what I did. Like, I would just fire, go out and try things. And then when I mess up, you just, then you start to like correct and fix. But you really want to make sure you're doing things. Yeah. Because if, if, if you're not going out and like interacting with the world and trying stuff, like you're never, you're never going to move forward. So. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. Because, yeah, I mean, the secrets to just, like, selling, like, products online, it's not really, like, there's people out there doing it. you got to figure out what they're doing and also how you can improve on it and basically find your own spot. So, yeah, it's definitely pretty good advice, I would say, right there. Yeah, and I, th I think people can do it, you know. Like, you just you just have to go out and try. <laughs> that's yeah. the simple. It's really the simplest thing to say, you know, like, and not give up because <clears throat> massive majority of the time, especially in the beginning, you're going to do things and it won't work. Yeah, or, or or you're gonna mess up, or you're gonna think it'll work and it won't work. Yeah, I mean you could have quit easily. I mean probably most people would quit when they lose thirty percent of their money. Where we're just selling Amazon when shipping out those things. But yeah, I mean a lot of people do quit, and I think people should look at that as a good thing. That okay, you're gonna realize most people quit, so be one of those that don't quit, and you'll be fine. So yeah, definitely a good point. What about those who are a little nervous about simply kind of going it on themselves and kind of owning their own little business? Okay. Good question. Good question. There's, there's a difference, I think, between being nervous and actually not being good at it. Like, mm, okay. business ownership is not for everyone. Yeah, it's so, true. I mean, I would say it's not for most people. Now, the internet does make it significantly easier to connect mm. to the world. Um, but if you have no desire, like, like, I know people that the thought of owning a business and being responsible for, every, for everything is terrifying to them. And like they would don't they just want to have a job where they go in, they work forty hours and they get a paycheck. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. You can build whatever life you want. But if you want to own something yourself and to build something and to be responsible for it and to watch it grow, whatever, whatever, then um, I would say uh, to overcome the nervousness, you have to experience success. Otherwise, you won't overcome the nervousness. And to experience success, you have to try things. That's a very good point, yeah, because there definitely are a lot of people, they just want the end result, but they don't realize that you need to love the process or love, like, actually, not necessarily, you don't have to love it, but you just kind of have to, like, understand that there's work to be involved. But, yeah, that's definitely yeah, a good point. and that's why, like, when people always ask me, well, how much money do you make, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't ever tell anyone how much money I make. Number one, I already told you I don't even know exactly how much. <laughs> because my systems are terrible. But number two, like it, like it's, it's not just about making the money. I mean, obviously, yeah, you have to make money, but like, it's not going to, for me to tell you how much money I make, it's not going to help you. It's like people yeah. are looking for some sort of a validation for like, Oh, well this guy's making this much money. So I guess it works. Yeah. Like, I mean, I can, I mean, I sell a lot of stuff. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many different factors. Cause I, like, you go to somebody who has 500 bucks for your name, you're not going to be doing the sales that Matthew's going to be doing. Or if you just don't have the work ethic, you're probably not going to do that. Or if you're in a different, yeah, I mean, there's just so many different factors that people just need to do something that works and go off your own pace and stop caring about everybody else. So how long did it take you to really start making money? Um, was it basically from the get go or how long did that start? Oh man, I made money on the first phone I bought and flipped. That's what got oh. me hooked. Oh no, that's, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Like, I mean, I was at school. I just said, like, I'll get on Craigslist, tell some, like, there's this McDonald's across the street from UTA where I went, and I met so many people there. I would just, like, be texting people, like, hey, can you meet me? I would just have somebody meet me after class. So I'd just walk over there and buy the phone, and, like, I would I would try to orchestrate things so everyone would come to me. Hmm. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, like, immediately, that's that's why it was it was honestly pretty rare that I would lose money. Like on, mm -hmm. on deals. I mean, yes, it did happen, but I, you, okay. So the first time you lose money, right. That's when you take it really seriously and you go, okay, why did I lose money? Well, I didn't check the IMEI. It was stolen. Oh crap. I'm an <laughs> idiot. Uh, the, the home button didn't work. I didn't test it. Dang it. I'm an idiot. You know? And then later when iCloud came out, it's like, oh, it was iCloud locked dad gummit. So you do that one time and then you'll never do it again. That's, that's how it works. And so that's just how our brains work. Like when, when we fail at something, it sticks in your mind. You're like, okay, well, what can I do to avoid this? 
how can I avoid this? There's like four different websites. You can check the IMEI to make sure it's not stolen. You can, I had like a checklist of things to test. You know, you just get like, you do it hundreds or thousands of times. You get really efficient at doing those things. Yeah. I mean, you definitely learn from your mistakes for sure. That's actually going to lead to the next point I want to talk about. What is the worst thing about selling cell phones and electronics? Oh man. Um, and how you're doing it today. So not like the old stuff with the IMEI and checking if it's fake, but like how you're doing today because you're mostly selling new stuff, correct? Yeah. yeah. Returns, I guess, in competition. So the prices can like really change quickly, right? Like you can do mm -hmm. your due diligence, you can do your research, but because, you know, some big company decides they're going to buy like 10000 of something and sell it for $2 less than everyone else and crush your margins, like sometimes that happens like, yeah you can't you can't do anything about it it's like it just is what it is like you can you can do all the research that you teach and everything and um uh, a nation could just become garbage for like a month yep so what's the best thing about selling cell phones and electronics then high demand lots high of demand. demand people want the products people are looking for the products there's just a huge range of products i mean like you know, you can build you can build your own brand out off of generic products if you wanted to. If you can learn how to uh, use keywords and PPC and all this kind of stuff, like there's, I mean, there's certain keywords that are just searched a ton on Amazon. Yeah. And if you can, if you wanted to do private label and build out a build out a generic product and and uh, build up you're ranking for certain keywords, you can start selling stuff. I mean, there's just so many different ways to do it. I yeah. mostly do like reverse engineer sourcing, I kind of call it where you like, I look for stuff that's selling and I go and I find it. Perfect. Awesome. So any last words, um, any last words or advice for the viewers? Um, yeah. So, uh, I really appreciate you having me on. First of all, Bo, Bo is awesome. Um, I've never done an interview before, and so it's, 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 I'll uh, I'll give Bo the link. Uh, <laughs> that was definitely a good interview and everything, and hopefully you gave some people inside inspiration on this that there is a road you can get to. But yeah, awesome. All right, Bo. Thanks, man. Appreciate right. it. Have a great day. Keep yes. on keep on rocking. Thank you so much for watching that interview. I hope it was a great value to you. I mean, I think it's pretty good experiences to kind of hear from. And Matthew's a great guy. He's very humble and really excited to see for his future because he's got a lot of sales, but now he's actually building an extra just foundation for him to go to the next level. So that's going to be great. And if you want to keep up to date with my videos or any other student interviews like this, because I'll be doing another uh, student who took my course and he's doing over $20,000 per month on Amazon. And really great experience. This guy didn't even know you could sell on Amazon more than like three months ago. Um, and I'll be posting that either Tuesday or next Saturday. So you want to make sure to subscribe to the channel and then also turn on that little notification bell so you actually get notified for my videos. And if you ever want to follow me on any other content, uh, feel free to follow me on Instagram as well. Post a lot of student testimonials there. And just have a great day. And if you want to go check out the course, you can at bowcrabo.com. And make sure to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, on Facebook, and just have a great day.